Hi, good day, brethren. This was just on my heart today to share with you all. Um, something quick that Lord has impressed upon my heart to share. Right, um, so good day, brethren. Reading from Isaiah 25, verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of all are faithfulness and truth. Right? I read this text during my study this morning, and indeed we have a lot to give God thanks for. We are Seventh-day Adventists, a peculiar people, distinct from the rest. Wherever an SDA, wherever an SDA work, your workplace, their co-workers should know we are different. Where we go, people should be able to tell whose we are. They would know that certain places, they can't find us, they wouldn't catch us. Right? Because we are different. There is a lady in my work, an SDA. She follows the principles of dress reform. While all my other co-workers wear pants and short skirts or tight skirts. Just mentioning for the purpose. Why we are to be distinct. And I mean in ignorance, God winks. She stands out. As she... Dresses uh, modestly. The prophet of God said that a health message is closely connected to the three angels' messages as the hand is connected to the body. In this health message, dress is included because what we eat and what we wear affects the physical, mental, and spiritual. I know there are people in God's church who are serious, and I thank God even though Sometimes it seems that there is not much who are standing for truth. I am reminded that 7,000 have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Let's face it, brethren. There is an apathy amongst us as a people. And we have become dead in our trespasses and sins. So much so that we have lost our identity as a people. So many of us have not heard present truth. Many don't even know our message for now. We have settled for this term, warming bench or time servers. The world's impenitence lies at the door of the church. Right? We want to know why the world is in this mess. It is because we fail to do our part right now, brethren. So many so-called religions are being formed and nearly all teaching spurious messages. Right? The newest one on, on the rise is the Hebrew Israelite. Right? And these guys, you know, I don't know. That's all I can say. People searching for meat for this time. And we who have been given the oracles of truth sleep on it. The men on the boat with Jonah were perplexed because of the storm around them. Songs familiar today? So many things happening and many are perplexed. They don't know what these things mean. They came to Jonah, sleeping down, deep down in the boat. They asked, O sleeper, what meanest thou? Understand therefore that while Jonah was asleep, he still was able to give a reason for his fate that he believed? Isn't, isn't this a, a, a mention of the, the five wise and the five foolish? By the way, Jonah was one of the wise. Right? We are the church militant brethren. Hence the division in our church. Who choose, who choose to believe this and that? Why guess at anything when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? Both Bible and Spirit of Prophecy points out this truth to us clearly. Let's do our part in all aspects, whether preaching, present truth, 
giving tracts, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, hospital ministry, etc. There is a wide field, brethren, and God is calling us. The world is still running because we are still walking. Our church has become too worldly and that's a problem. Do we really desire to wake up and make Make up for lost time by being stewards of our time, money, and allow God to prepare us and to prepare a dying world? Let's ask if we really long for heaven, brethren. If we do, our actions will show. Many of us say, I do believe in his imminent return, but their works are lacking, just as the Jewish people at Christ's first coming. Faith and works go hand in hand. You can't separate the two. When someone is organizing a plan, he first internalizes it, then executes and starts to work. And we do and we do see it visibly. If no fruits are showing from us, maybe we are not connected to that true vine, which is Jesus. When the military is under attack, they mobilize men ready for war. God can't mobilize us because we are not unified. In unity there is strength. The ceiling which is settling which is a settling into the truth both intellectually and spiritually so that we can be moved is taking place right this moment. Review Revelation 7. You will see the, the whole picture. Is either we choose to comply with God's order or be or we be passed by. That's a sad thing. By the sealing angel, which is the Holy Spirit, you will find that in Ephesians 4.30. And once we grieve him, virgin, we know we can't enter heaven. To close, in Ezekiel chapter 37 is presented our situation. God took Ezekiel to a valley, and he saw many dry bones, and behold, they were very dry. God asked him, Son of man, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel answered, O Lord, thou knowest. How only God knows indeed, but we all have a choice to comply and to submit to Him. The decision is ours. Either you and I humble ourselves and God put back life in us, or we can choose to remain dry and dead. While He raised up stones to do His work, indeed we see them on our nation streets. I want to go home, brethren. Do you? So just to close, Prophet says, After all our lukewarmness and sins, he says, Return unto me, and I will return unto thee, and I will heal all thy backsliding. Some, I saw, she said, will gladly return. Others will not let this message to the Laodicean church have its weight upon them. They will glide along much after the same manner as before. And will be spewed out of the mouth of the Lord. Those only who zealously repent will have favor with God. So just an encouragement, brethren. Just an, a little experience. Uh, my experience on the field. Uh, no matter, I mean, you, you don't have to do the same thing I do. But whatever your gifts may be, God could use that for His glory, His purpose. Right? And uh, one thing that I have learned learned is that you don't have to be qualified to do God's work. Right? You don't have to be qualified. Your textbook, brethren, is the Bible. The author is the Holy Spirit. The teacher is the Holy Spirit. So you may face some skeptics, some infidels, and different set of people when you do God's work. But God's Spirit will guide you how to respond, if not to respond. But you know, I'm here just to encourage. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. God is calling us to his vineyard. Would you heal heed the call, brethren? I hope we do. Blessing.